now have the remarks by the authors. The first remarks we will ask uh, Mr. Kwamina Ahoy, who is a senior lecturer at the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. Good morning. <clears throat> Madam Chairperson, the right honorable speaker, protocols observed, fellow citizens. When I was approached by IDEC to ghost write Justice Annan's biography, I looked at the nature of the project and I decided that only a fellow vandal with deep knowledge of the inside workings of government involving Justice Annan would do. So I approached Nana to that and he kindly consented that we co-author the book. I'm not going to make comments. Nana will make the comments. We have agreed that I'll read two extracts from the book that will titillate you and also whet your appetite so that if we were minded to pledge a certain amount, you double the amount. I'm going to read two extracts that have to do with the founding of the Chronicle newspaper and also one involving myself, how I happened at one time to be Minister of Local Government and Minister of Foreign Affairs at the same time. We write from the perspective of very deep insiders. And therefore, we had a great difficulty in deciding what to tell and what not to tell. Because whether you believe it or not, it is not all that happens in government that gets told or that should get told. And so we have tried very hard in not breaking any laws, in deciding which events involving Justice Annan we should put in the public domain the founding of the Chronicle newspaper. This chapter is headed, The Challenges of Democracy. And the subheading is the reality of a limited executive operating from the sidelines. It is possible and most likely that the strategy to get President Rawlings to appreciate the constitutional limitations on presidential powers was worked out between Justice Annan and Captain Chikata. We asked people who were largely PNDC and NDC associates, what they thought was a bond that tied such ideologically opposed personalities like Justice Annan and Captain Chikata together. Without exception, all of them gave us one of the possible reasons their joint realization of the need to curb the exuberance of Jerry Rollins, to get him to appreciate the limitations of his executive powers so that he would act within the spirit and letter of the Constitution. An event that graphically illustrates this was the founding of the Chronicle newspaper. Before the advent of constitutional rule, Justice Annan and Captain Chiketa called a meeting of a, quote, conspiratorial group, of which I was one, which discussed how Rawlings could be, quote, groomed sufficiently to accept not only the exigencies of constitutional rule, and in particular the public criticism, nay, insults, that often went with it. The decision was taken to sponsor a critical, abrasive, private newspaper that would be so overtly critical of Rawlings and the PNDC that by the time the country entered constitutional rule, the PNDC chairman would have become immune to public criticism of his style and his administration. As a first step, the newspaper licensing law, 1988, PNDC law 211, was to be repealed. It was ultimately repealed by the National Media Commission law, 1992, PNDC law 229. The newspaper licensing law had required the issuance of a license by the PNDC Secretary for Information before one could publish a newspaper in Ghana. It was one of the so-called gang of four laws, whose repeal had been constantly agitated for by civil society organizations, professional bodies, 
and religious bodies in the run-up to constitutional rule. The others were the Preventive Custody Law 1982, PNDC Law 4, which empowered the PNDC to order the detention of persons without a court order. The Habeas Corpus Amendment Law 1984, PNDC Law 91, which prohibited the High Court from inquiring into the grounds for the detention of persons under PNDC Law 4. And the Religious Bodies Registration Law 1989, PNDC Law 221, which required the registration of all churches and other religious bodies with the National Commission for Culture. As a second step, the PNDC Secretary for Education, Mr. K.B. Asante, who is here, but who was not part of the conspiracy, and who until now, I am sure, did not even know about this conspiracy. With sector responsibility for UNESCO, was made to sponsor a memorandum to the PNDC Committee of Secretaries, the equivalent of the cabinet, under the PNDC governance arrangement, for a request to be made to the UNESCO for a grant of $80,000 to set up a private newspaper, quote, in promotion of free speech and for the advancement of democracy. Thirdly, Ghana's representative of the UNESCO, Professor P.A.V. Ansa, tabled the Ghana government's request at a meeting of the board of UNESCO and got it approved. As a final step, Professor P.A.V. Ansa, who had been tasked with the responsibility of overseeing the establishment of the newspaper, but who was not a member of the conspiratorial group that had plotted the strategy, invited a so-called enfant terrible of Ghana of journalism, a Ghanaian practicing his trade in Nigeria, Kofi Kumsan, to come down to Ghana and set up and edit the Ghanaian Chronicle using the UNESCO grant as seed capital. Kofi Kumsan himself was, of course, not part of the conspiracy. The rest is history. <laughs> By the time the country entered the Fourth Republic, public criticism and condemnation of Jerry Rollins and his administration had become part of the political and journalism landscape of Ghana, with the Ghanaian chronicle as a flag star of their court, Destroy Rollins' crusade. One is not certain whether Rollins himself was part of his, this conspiracy to set him up in his own interest but it would appear that this was one of the master strokes of the pair of Justice Annan and Captain Chikata. <laughs> President Rollins had decided to move Dr. Ubeda Samwa from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, where he had been minister since 1982, to become the new Attorney General. All were in agreement that the most logical person to replace Dr. Samwa as foreign minister was his deputy, the veteran diplomat and one-time Ghana's permanent representative to the United Nations, Mr. Victor Beho. But there was a problem. Both Dr. Asamoah and Mr. Beho were from the Volta region. Given that the Foreign Affairs portfolio is perceived as one of the juiciest cabinet positions, an ever go ever come transition would be perceived as a pursuit of an ethnic ever agenda in which President Rollins and Ewe would appear to be complicit to protect his elder kith and king and conserve the position for them. Justice Anna, who insisted that competence must triumph over perceptions of ethnicity, came up with the perfect solution. Why don't we appoint Mr. Kram Nahoy, Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, as minister with additional responsibility for foreign affairs? until such time that the association of Dr. Ubeda Samwa with the foreign ministry would have faded. At that point, Mr. Gweho could then be nominated for the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs. The team members agreed. President Rollins approved. And so it came to pass that in the first cabinet of the second government of the Fourth Republic, Dr. Ubeda Samwa was appointed Attorney General Mr. Kram Nahoy was announced as Minister for Local Government and Rural Development with additional responsibility for foreign affairs, and Mr. Victor Beho was announced as Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs. After a period of about one year, Mr. Victor Beho was nominated for the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs, was duly vetted, 
and approved by Parliament and formally appointed to the position. The transition from Dr. Ubeda Samwa to Mr. Victor Behu, a seasoned diplomat who was eminently qualified in his own right, had taken place without as much as an ethnic whimper from the media or any political commentator. Justice Annan had established himself as a shrewd political tactician. Thank you very much. The co-author, Nana Achudazi, who was also former Chief of Staff, Office of the President from 1993 to 2001, will give his remarks. And we thank Kwamina for, your, for reading those excerpts. I think that you are making people aware that they have to have this book. Right, Honorable 